We're going to start today with crazy talk. And this is as crazy as me saying Joe Biden and Donald Trump are best of mates and they go golfing together or something like that. You know, that's crazy talk, but it's nothing compared to this. Sink, work surface, ready to be secured down and all the rest of it, but... There has been a request from the interior designer to move the sink because it is too far away from the edge. And I know what people are going to say, but kitchen fitters and people like that are not allowed to comment. Apart from to, to say, whoa, tell the interior designer to stop going that way. That's crazy talk because... This distance here needs to be there, which means that sink needs to move to there so that there is marginally more space back there and the sink isn't quite as far back from the edge. I know it's not in the right spot, but come on. Does that warrant taking the sink out, moving the plumbing, detaching everything, redoing everything, cutting a new piece, putting it in. Really? If that's the case, comment with a yes or a no. And I'm going to go with the majority. So, hey, come on, don't stitch me up here, folks. But I know the interior designer would like that sink moving forward. So there's a little bit more at the back. And there's a little bit less at the front. It will mean that I could, in theory, do the straight edge join here and not do the mitered cut. So there could be, you know, a bit of silver lining to those clouds that are gathering, but I don't know. I don't know. Please help me out by saying, no, the interior designer is wrong. Nige, it looks great. For me, I'm tall. I can see in. It all works. Help me out. Anyway, on with today's show. It'll be the usual, you know, me saying I'm going to do one thing and then doing something totally different. So enjoy it. Hi, everyone. It's incredibly late in the day and I've been kind of out and about. We've also had some stuff to do, but, you know... Well, the cat's away, the mice will play. And, oh, that was a look that could kill. <laughs> it's our interior designer giving me, um, yes, not a welcoming look, but I'm not surprised because we have splatted this wall with all manner of things on a number of occasions. And she has had to keep painting over our mistakes. So, I am sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a good job it dries in one colour, isn't it? Because <laughs> it looks, it looks terrible. <laughs> Which is not what you. That's not what you want to hear when someone comes around and says it looks terrible. But here's the thing, as well, folks. We've decided in this room. I've got it in the back of the van because I've been to the hire shop, and when you look at. You know, the quality of the flooring like this, that we have made a complete, or I've made a complete pig's ear of. But I'm looking down here at the boards. And what you'll see is they're in really good shape. I have hired a sander. So I've got one of those big, sort of industrial type sanders. I've got the edging sander and we're going to give it a go. So before the paint dries, I'm going to fill the room with dust. No! <laughs> Relax and breathe and breathe. <laughs> no, of course I'm not. And I'm going to have to go around on my hands and knees and hammer in all the nails and just make sure there's nothing protruding to rip the sandpaper you know on the belts and stuff what does that mean again it means it's another empty the room time 
the cardboard box that I started off with, that is, it's hopefully the trim for here. So I'll be able to just put a bit of trim on the edge of this. I always had the feeling that you got a, an iron and you ironed this on. I'll have to have a look, see how you fix it. I'm sure people are just uh, just at this point in time screaming, going, oh my goodness, what are you going to do now? I don't know, is the simple answer. Anyway, what I'm going to do, I've got a coffee, I'm going to have a coffee and I'm going to try and mark out where I could put spotlights. So the spots have to be at least two inches away from one of the joists, which is always the fun and games now of trying to work out where the hell things are. I don't know if you can see down the line there. So we're trying to work out the best place to put them. Now this is, this is all assuming that the joists and everything else that are kind of up there aren't an issue. What are the chances of that? <laughs> I measured the total distance, divided it by the number of light fittings that we want. So you should have five gaps, four lights. So that, that was worked out about 83 centimeters each. And this is where the maths comes in and you think, have I done it right? Because from uh, the final one through to the wall should be 83 centimeters as well. So up to the wall, up to the mark, pull it across and we are as near as damn it from us. But we are as near as damn it, 83 centimeters. We've got this run of spotlights that'll go down here and then we'll go across there. Now, the reason that we've moved it in a fraction is because we're gonna put them spotlight running up the line of the sort of uprights here of the fireplace. So we're gonna have a spotlight here a spotlight here and that distance was 120 centimeters so we've done another 120 centimeters there so that these three are all equidistant this is why people take ages working out where things are going to go 79 79 out 83 across should be there and look along that joist is there and we've got a nail and a nail it's gonna it's gonna be right there again and these things need to be that wide 
Okay. What was what was that? <laughs> Nothing to do with you. Because <laughs> you're not going to paint tonight. <laughs> uh, well, I might. No, leave it. Leave it out. I will do. Yeah, I will do. I'll slap a bit on because this is going to drive me nuts. What we're coming in from the wall. Eighty-three from the wall. <laughs> I'm laughing because I have just worked out where it should be there and I can already see there's a nail there's a nail I have managed to put this so far three out of three I've put it right on the joist which is good in some ways because it means that if I just shift it it moves them all into a better position. Boom! We've managed to put it on top of a joist again. Disaster, but actually brilliant. Because that means we can just shift it a couple of centimetres, probably five centimetres, out. And that means that um, it's going to miss all the joists. And the good thing is, this one isn't under the bath because there's the bath foot that one is missing the waist so that's the sink waist there and the uh, pipes so if we go that way we'll miss that what i now need to do is do the 1.2 meters uh, sort of down the line for the ones above the cooker and folks we might get away with this what horror story is under there? Well, if we move it away from this joist to here, we've missed the gas pipe, the water pipes, and the cables that I'll be clipping up. So we might be able to put the spotlight in there. We turn around to this one. And similarly, there's where I think it should be, which if we look underneath again, I'll clip the cable to the, uh, to the joist and we should be good to go in there. We've got a cold water feed. I know that's a cold water feed there. This is the rubbish left behind by the uh, professionals. Yeah, they just dump everything. This is potentially quite good because then we can put the other one down there, uh, sort of here. We can put the other one here. And then if we come into the other room, we'll be able to get the other one in here, uh, here and here sort of thing or wherever they are. So I now need to move them away from the joist so that you've got, it recommended, what was it, 50 mils from the joist? I'm not gonna do that now, because I need to do the old blue paint and just slap a bit of paint on this wall behind me. So that's what I'm gonna do now. That's quite remarkable that that spacing hit the joist every time. It's when you hit one, miss one. As soon as you move it, you then hit another one and then miss another one. So that could be, come on, that's what we like, isn't it? People say it's luck. I don't think it is. I think it's preparation, meeting opportunity. That's what we've got there. Anyway, just to make us all feel blue, I'm going to paint the wall. About halfway down? I don't know, way further down than that. Because you couldn't really extend the ladder.
I need it a little bit away from the wall. So this is a real problem, isn't it? Yeah. It's just a hole. I told you ages ago I wanted half a hole. Go and get me half a hole. How are you meant to? How the heck are you meant to do it if you can't get an angle on it? That is super annoying. Right, folks, <laughs> done the blue wall, we've measured out for the spotlights and we're trying to get ready to do that tomorrow, which isn't gonna be great fun. Not looking forward to that. I'm gonna have to, Matthew's gonna take this bit of wood out and, and sort of prep a bit, but we're gonna have to just do it. I know what people are saying, oh, just board it over. Holding a piece of board up there and trying to screw it in. So yeah, we've got a lot to do tomorrow, but obviously, you know, I'm gonna break with tradition and I'm gonna skin the ceiling first so that I don't have walls that when we skin the ceiling, it all falls down the newly plastered wall. So I'm gonna try and do it in the right order. But first things first, we've got to sort that out, which is gonna be a pain. Not looking forward to tomorrow. Yes, I am because this will have dried and I'll be able to scrape it off as opposed to, at the moment, it's sticking to everything. I should have worn gloves. I, I didn't know where I'd put them. I thought I could get away with it. I didn't, yet again, Never mind. Anyway, the interesting thing is we've got the spotlights lined up. I think we can sort that. I think we can sort this. We've got some more painting done. It's been good, even though it's been short. And that's what makes escaping to the dream house so exciting and so rewarding and i hope you're enjoying it i'm going to see you soon as we come on escape to the dream house see you soon